Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at the relationship between the second derivative of a function f of x and the convexity of that function. Formally, we want to prove that if the second derivative is non-negative, then the function f of x is a convex function. That is, if the second derivative is non-negative, implies that f of x is a convex function. So, it starts with the following definition based on Taylor series expansion of function f of x around a point x0, which is given as the summation f of x0 plus the first derivative of x0 at x0 and the difference x minus x0 and plus 1 by 2 the second derivative at a point x star multiplied by the square of the difference x minus x0 square. This approximation can be derived by using the Taylor series expansion and this point x star is basically between x0 and x. So now consider a definition for x0 in terms of two points x1 and x2 that such that x0 is equal to lambda times x1 plus 1 minus lambda times x2. So basically x0 is somewhere between x1 and x2. So at x equal to x1 we have f of x1 greater than f of x0 plus f dash of x0 multiplied by x1 minus x0. And, and this is and this function f of x1 is greater than this the sum of the first two terms because the third term in the Taylor series approximation is always positive since second derivative is assumed to be positive in the hypothesis and the difference is the square of this difference is always positive. So uh, the function value at x equal to x1 is always greater than this sum. And since x0 is equal to this weighted sum by inserting this value you get is equal to f of x0 plus f dash of x0 multiplied by 1 minus lambda into x1 minus x2. And similarly for f of x2 that is x equal to x2 this function is greater than f of x0 plus f dash of x0 multiplied by x2 minus x0 which is again equal to f of x0 plus f dash of x0 multiplied by lambda times x2 minus x1. So let us call this equation 1 and this is equation 2. So by multiplying uh, the first function with lambda and second one with second inequality with lambda 1 minus lambda and adding the two inequalities I mean the weighted inequalities we get lambda times f of x1 plus 1 minus lambda times f of x2 is greater than or equal to lambda times f of x0 plus 1 minus lambda times f of x0 and the two other terms basically cancel each other because this is lambda times 1 minus lambda and this is lambda times 1 minus lambda and these are basically L2 inverse of each other. So these two cancel out. So we have this inequality and if you rewrite this inequality it is nothing but f of x0 is less than or equal to lambda times f of x1 plus 1 minus lambda f of x2. Note that here lambda should always be less than 1 and greater than 0. So this is not, and this inequality is nothing but the definition of a convex function when x0 lies between x1 and x2. Hence the second when for a non-negative second derivative that is when a function has non-negative second derivative then it basically implies that the function is a convex function. And now let us look at a more intuitive understanding of this theorem that uh, second a positive second derivative basically means a convex function. So now using the Taylor series expansion again and writing the definition of the second derivative basically an approximation of the second derivative we can easily write it as f of x plus h minus 2 times f of x plus f of x minus h divided by h square. So this is an approximation of the second derivative. It is much similar to the first appro the approximation used in the formal proof. But this is always greater than 0.
So, rewriting this term, we can easily see that it is f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h is greater than f of x minus f of x minus h divided by h. So, the slope of the first line is greater than the slope of the second line. That is, when you look at a convex function, the basically, and if you have two points, f of I mean, x minus h and x plus h, and x is somewhere in between, then the slope of this line connecting these two points and the slope of the line connecting these two points can be compared. And the slope of the first line is always greater than the slope of the second line. That is what this approximation basically means. So, by moving this second point x minus h towards left and repeating this process several times, we can basically come to a basically come to a situation where we have x minus h is at x1 and x plus h is at x2 and x is at this point. And this point is basically the chord which is always above the curve. And then we see that the slope of this line is always greater than the slope of this line by just following this argument recursively. So, that basically means that f of x2 minus f of x divided by x2 minus x is greater than f of x minus f of x1 divided by x minus x1. So, rearranging this inequality, we get f of x2 minus f of x multiplied by x minus x1 is greater than or equal to f of x minus f of x1 multiplied by x2 minus x. Again, rearranging these terms, we can easily see that it is f of x2 multiplied by x minus x1 plus f of x1 multiplied by x2 minus x is greater than or equal to x2 minus x1 multiplied by f of x. So, now rewriting this inequality, we have f of x is less than or equal to x2 minus x divided by x2 minus x1 multiplied by f of x1 plus x minus x1 by x2 minus x1 multiplied by f of x2. So, if you look at this inequality, which is which looks exactly same as f of x less than or equal to lambda times f of x1 plus 1 minus lambda into f of x2, where lambda is equal to this fraction and 1 minus lambda is equal to this fraction. So, this is again the definition of a convex function. Thanks for watching.